Hi everyone, my name is Sophie Tim. I just turned 11 years old this month. I'm a sixth grader at Mission Hills Middle School. As many of you probably know, this month we are celebrating the Moon Festival, which is a very important holiday for many Asian Americans, symbolizing family reunion and traditional cultures. But because of the recent COVID pandemic, many overseas Asians could not celebrate with their family. And that's why we're here celebrating together online. Today, I'm going to talk about the Moon Festival, its origins, how people celebrate it, Chinese characters, and poems and myths about the moon. The Moon Festival, also known as the Mid-Autumn Festival and in Chinese, Zhongqiujie, is celebrated in East and Southeast Asia. It is one of the most important festivals. The Chinese phrase Zhongqiujie translates to Mid-Autumn Festival. Zhong means mid or middle, Xiu means autumn, and Jie means festival. The moon festival is celebrated in mid-autumn. The exact date varies depending on when the full moon takes place. Traditionally, the moon festival took place on the 15th day of the eighth month of the lunar calendar. This year, it takes place September 21st. Around this time, the autumn harvest is happening as well. Now let's take a look at the origins of the Moon Festival. The Moon Festival dates back 3,000 years when an emperor from the Shang Dynasty, also Yi Dynasty, worshipped the moon with hopes for a bountiful harvest. The Moon Festival later became more popular during the Tang and Song Dynasties, around 618 to 1279 AD. It is now the second most popular Chinese festival after the Chinese New Year. In the image to the right, the full moon shines over modern day China during the moon festival. Now let's talk about how the moon festival is celebrated. The moon festival is now similar to Thanksgiving as it is a family gathering and people watch the full moon with family and friends. People make lanterns that symbolize the light that leads them to good luck, perform a beautiful lantern show as shown on the image on the right, and children play games. During the moon festival, people gifted the products of their good harvests to the moon. They also worship the moon goddess Chang'e. However, in modern day, the moon festival is celebrated with a specific food, in this case, the moon cake or yuebing. As I mentioned earlier, the moon festival is celebrated with the moon cake, one of the most popular foods to eat during the moon festival. The moon cake has many different flavors with delicious fillings such as egg yolk inside and pretty patterns outside as shown in the image. It can be enjoyed at any time of the year as well. Later in our program today, you will have a chance to learn how to make a moon cake yourself. So please stay till the end of our show. Next, I'd like to tell you some Chinese myths about the moon. In addition to worshiping the moon, people also worship the moon goddess called Chang'e. She is depicted as a beautiful woman living on the moon with a white rabbit, a toad, and a tree in paintings such as the picture on the right. The myth originated from shadows now known as craters on the moon when ancient people from East and Southeast Asia imagine a goddess and her companions living there. This is one version of the myth. One day, the 10 suns rose together, causing great disaster to the people. A great archer, Ho Yi, shot down nine of the 10 suns, leaving only one to provide warmth and light. An immortal admired him and sent him the elixir of immortality. But because he did not want to live on without his wife, he gifted the, the elixir to her for safekeeping. However, one day Chang'e, his wife, accidentally swallowed the elixir. And as she floated away to the moon, Ho Yi was saddened and presented many of her favorite foods. Other people also sympathized and presented their foods and many other things to the moon. I'd like to introduce a really famous traditional Chinese poem about the moon. Almost every Chinese person knows this poem by heart. 
If you can learn and recite it to your Chinese friends, they will be pleasantly surprised. This famous poem was by Li Bai from the Tang Dynasty, which he named Quiet Night Thoughts or Jin Ye Si. Please allow me to read this poem in Chinese first and then explain the meaning in English. Chuang Qian Ming Yue Guang Yi Shi Di Shang Shuang Ji Tao Wan Ming Yue Di Tao Si Gu Xiang this poem translates to Quiet Night Thoughts by Li Bai. Moonlight shining in front of the bed, like there is frost on the ground. I look up and see the moon. I look down and miss my town. Now that you know about the Moon Festival, I'm sure you've encountered a few Chinese characters along the way. Chinese characters were originally similar to hieroglyphics or pictographs. They were developed from drawings of images first and then became more advanced over time and are now characters. For example, here's the evolution of the characters Ru or sun and Yue or moon. In the evolution of the character Ru or sun, you can see that it was originally a drawing of the sun peeking over the horizon, then became simplified to a circle with a dot in the middle. The circle became more squared and the dot became a line. And now it is the root we know. The evolution of the character Ye or moon was originally a half circle representing the moon in its faces and then over time evolved into the character we know today. As we near the end of my presentation, I'd like to emphasize again that many different Asian cultures celebrate this wonderful festival. Here are some beautiful images showing how the Moon Festival is celebrated in each culture's ways. Many Asians abroad also celebrate the Moon Festival overseas, such as in San Francisco Chinatown, where a lantern festival took place September 11th this year. The image on the bottom left depicts the celebration that happened there. Thank you for coming and listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Moon Festival and I'm sure you will enjoy the activities related up next.